uh, you know, as you know, uh, Intel uh, pretty much did a, a, a public abandonment uh, of Intel out there uh, to focus on their own M1 silicon. And uh, it's been nice to see uh, what I consider uh, truth telling uh, that Intel has been doing. And Intel came out with their second generation of um, their uh, positioning work, uh, which we're calling Intel dispelling the Apple spell. Yeah, and by the way, I'm still hung up on you wearing a coat. Um, I don't know about all that, but uh, I actually have to speak at a conference on Monday, and I'm gonna—I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm so Wait, much. Daniel, who who are you speaking with again? Oh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So uh, thanks for letting me plug that, Pat. But uh, I'm speaking at the Channel Companies. You know, if you maybe know Sierra and their Best of Breed conference, talking about the shortage and what caused the semiconductor shortage, what's being done. And I'm, um, I'm going to be speaking alongside uh, IBM CEO Arvind Krishna, Cisco CEO Chuck Robbins, HPE CEO Antonio Neri. Uh, I go first. I go first. So um, I'm just warm. I'm the warm up act, but I'm very excited to be there. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, you know, even if it does mean traveling on a Sunday. Um, I don't know, Daniel. I've been to a lot of concerts when I was younger, and, and sometimes the opening act is, is the preferred act. So. I'm yeah. expecting you to. I'm expecting you to bring it. Mine, mine will be. Uh, mine will be. A, we'll have fun, Pat. It'll be a lot of story we've told a few times about how we got into this mess. And sometimes I think about the world that everybody knows that what's going on with chips, but then I realize that we know this so well because we lived this every yeah. single day. Speaking of chips, all right. The final topic. The final topic. <laughs> okay. So Intel, uh, Pat. You know, a lot of people probably saw the Justin Long campaign. Loved that campaign. Uh, received a little criticism for how much I love that campaign because, well, it doesn't really matter how good someone does a compete campaign with Apple. There's always going to be people that are just going to tell you it's stupid because, you know, Apple people are just, you know, they're, they're actually out right now trying to go buy an Apple car. Anyway, um, but Intel, you know, being more realistic is looking at that broader market and the opportunity and saying, hey, we do some things that are really innovative that Apple still doesn't do. Now, full disclaimer, you and I were both super critics of M1. We thought it would take a long time. Apple did a little better than I thought in terms of getting M1 optimized. But Intel's still doing so many innovative things and their OEMs are able to really pivot off that, whether that's dual dual screen, whether that's, you know, your flexible notebooks, detachables, touch, touch. I mean, my God, Apple, get it together. Put a touch screen on your on your Mac. I know why you don't do it, because you don't want to stop selling iPads, but but for, for crying out loud. So anyways, this was like a real people campaign. They were paid, um, but they had full option to opt in or opt out. And essentially, this was done as kind of a, in a, in a, in a, marketing traditional way where people were brought into a room, they were shown something with an unbranded standpoint and they were asked how excited they would be about it. They thought they were seeing features that were gonna come out in a new Apple. Turns out what they were really being shown is features that have been available in some cases for some time on Intel devices and a lot of them just being blown away. Um, I thought it was pretty clever. I thought it was you know, something that I think just needs to keep being hammered home. I think Apple fans will think it's dumb. They will always think it's dumb. So Intel cannot make a decision on how it markets based on how Apple fans are going to operate. Um, if I'm being critical in any way of the campaign, some of the features I think were hard to believe that not everybody already knew. But this also, Pat, is where I say I'm in a vacuum of being a guy that has 40 laptops in my office that gets to play with tons of technology all the time. And sometimes I forget that even people who are prosumers that really know tech may not be as connected to it as we are. But Pat, you know what? Look, Intel has been a company that's it, it, that has uh, had the benefit for a very long time of having very significant market share. Uh, at times that has kept them somewhat humble, maybe not being aggressive enough when companies like AMD and Apple have made moves that have been somewhat difficult on the company's longer term prospects. I like seeing Intel coming out with a little humor, a little, a little uh, aggressive posture. Like I said, I love the Justin Long stuff because it was playful, it was fun. Yes, it picked at Apple, but but why not? That's not it's not uncommon. It wasn't wasn't ill or nefarious. It was just fun. And so this one was a little more technical. It was hitting the the, the, the spots that, that Intel knows it's got strength and its platform and its wide variety of product.
But having said that, like I said, you know, it's it's going to be met with mixed reviews. It was met with mixed reviews. The real question for Intel, will they sell more client PC chips because of this campaign? That's what it's all about. We won't know for a few months, but the Apple spell, at least for a few people, may have been dispelled. And as we keep seeing it, people will realize the best innovation really isn't being done at Apple. Well, certainly, certainly not in uh, MacBooks, and I would even, I would even posit the iPhone watch is killer. You know, will I get in trouble for saying that? By the way, the best innovation is being done at Apple. I don't. Can we not parse well, that out and quote it. I don't know. I mean, you and I, uh, you and I showed up on uh, some people's hit lists uh, on our coverage on the M1. We even had. I got the uh, yeah, the Apple Lope or what was his name? The <laughs> yeah, no, it was great. Listen, I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna jump right in, and and I, I saw some of the criticisms, but you know it's funny, Daniel. There's there's only a few things good about being an, an OG, and that's you've seen things behind, and you would like to think that it maybe gives you a little bit of perspective uh, as, as well. And being in the industry over 30 years, I've seen things like this go back and forth uh, so many times. You know, there were some people said, hey. I'm going to read this. All of it looks staged and you will ask yourself why you're even watching it. So if you haven't done a primary research group, you need to shut the up. Um, I've done <laughs> probably 200 behind the glass uh, research uh, projects. And this is exactly uh, what they look like. Now, if Apple lovers went in expecting that it was Apple. There might be a little bit, hey, I'm going to say that I love this stuff because I, th I, I, like, I love Apple and I think this is Apple. I, I forget the name of the guy who was proctoring this. Was it Chip or Nick? Um, but, but definitely looked like uh, some of the people that, that I've met at Apple. So, you know, it, it was actually really good. So there is a little bit of that. And there is the disconnect between what people say they're going to do uh, in a primary uh, research session versus what they actually do. But all this stuff is completely missing the point. Uh, and then another person said, it's so insulting. Apple fans isn't exactly a bright move. So let me address the two of these very quickly. Listen, we're, we're way over. We're just riffing right now. It's Saturday morning. But, 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 but first of all, Intel is not targeting to educate the unmovable uh, Apple fans probably like my wife, which is like, she's got her MacBook, she knows how to use it, she's comfortable with it, and she's gonna get, just keep buying it and buying it, buying it because she doesn't have to relearn something and she likes how it integrates with her iPhone. That's it, she's not, she's never gonna move. So, but she's not the target. Uh, what Intel is doing is is they're, they're targeting people who are on the fence, okay? Uh, uh, the, the on the fence voters. And the other thing they're doing is they are communicating that uh, uh, to their ecosystem, software and hardware partners, that we're very proud of what we do and we think we do a good job at it. And, and look at this. So uh, missing the point, they're not targeting Apple people, completely missing the point. And you know what? If you haven't sat in a primary research market uh, uh, sorry, research study uh, at, you know, 10 p.m., eating M&Ms, uh, uh, questioning people. You don't have any idea uh, what you're talking about. With that said, the fact is, is that Windows PCs and the ecosystem has a much higher level of innovation that Apple has brought to the table since they brought the original MacBook Air. There's just nothing there. Why? Because the resources were not because Apple's not smart. They are. It's because the resources were put on iPhone, watch and iPad. That was the priority. And number four, maybe number five was MacBooks. And now services. Yeah. And, and they've cranked this up. I'm, I'm wondering maybe autos in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, but, but, but quite frankly, it just never was a priority. And if you remember, I call this the Tim Cook apology tour where Tim Cook went out and said, no, 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 PCs are actually important to us. You know, just, uh, just wait. But um, I do give Apple credit for the M1. It is a high performance, um, 
low power, uh, on the leading edge of, of manufacture. It doesn't run uh, many games at all that gamers uh, want to play. It's not fully compatible yet with some professional audio and video peripherals. And that's one of the biggest reasons that they're keeping Intel around. And also for the corporate users who have a, a nine month to a year uh, process uh, of, of testing. And, you know, when that security software doesn't work with the M1 processor, it becomes an issue. Okay. So give Apple credit uh, for innovation where it's due on the M1. But when it comes to the MacBook as a platform, not even close. I, 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 I've got nothing, I've got nothing, man. I, no, but that, you know, you, you hit it, you hit it home. Uh, some good Silicon innovation, Pat, but not necessarily in terms of that whole user experience, certainly not at the enterprise level. Like you said, we're just kind of riffing at this point, but yeah. I give Intel credit. Like I said, you know, they stood back for a long time and let everybody kind of throw spears at them. And to some extent, they're standing strong, still a very significant market share, great partnerships in OEMs. You know what, if they want to take a little a little poke at Apple every every now and again, I, I think they deserve that. Yeah, it's exciting stuff. Pat Gelsinger recently came out and said, quote unquote, AMD's lead is over after Alder Lake and Sapphire Rapids. And it's like, wow. Uh, and I can tell you that Intel or Microsoft is not going to take uh, even the M1 uh, standing down. And let's put that in perspective. Apple has 8% market share. Now, most of that's in the premium market, you know, a thousand bucks and up. So it's very profitable. Uh, but kind of put in perspective, 8% market share as opposed to uh, iPhone global market share at around 25%. And US iPhone market share at 50%. So there's a big difference there. 